right, we're finally done with Chapter 3. This is 3-9 to 3-11. What we're going to look at is control of mitosis because the a disease of uncontrolled mitosis is cancer. Uh, so let's be clear. Cancer is a, un is a disease of uncontrolled mitosis. Now, that sounds like cancer is one disease. All cancers are one type of disease. And in one sense, it is. They are, in one sense. But in the other sense, every single cancer is a different type of disease because different tissues and different cells receive different signals to divide. So you can't, um, you can study cancer, all of cancers, but you got to remember you're going to be receive, you're going to be studying different signals for different cells to divide. So then when you have uncontrolled mitosis, it's probably going to be due to different microenvironments. So we'll talk about cancer a little bit here. Uh, the mitotic rate. First of all, the slower the mitotic rate in an organism, the longer the, the cells have in that organism. So if you have cells that divide very rapidly, those cells don't have a long life. And some cells don't divide at all, and they, and they stay living for the entire time that the organism is living, that we are living. So we have muscle cells, we have myocytes and neurons that that don't divide any longer and yet they stay they stay alive as long as we do uh, but then we have cells that uh, um, divide very rapidly like our skin cells and our the lining of our digestive tract and they only live a few days so how do we keep skin on our body and how do we keep our our digestive lining in, intact there's populations of stem cells that keep replacing those epithelial linings so we have uh, balance Cell division balances cell death, so we keep the same lining. Now we have signals that tell our cells to divide, and sometimes these signals are called growth factors, and sometimes they're called uh, my, my mitosis promoting factor or M phase promoting factor. M phase is mitosis. Uh, we have these signals tell our cells to divide, so we call those the gas of cell division cycle. These signals that say divide. But we also have some cells that tell our cells don't, or some signals that tell our cells don't divide, and we'll call those the breaks of the cell division cycle. So we have some signals that say divide, and some signals that say don't divide. And the ones that say don't divide are called repressor genes. So the repressor genes are the breaks. Now to get cancer, two things has to happen. First of all, you have to turn on the gas uncontrollably. It's always on. Like you have too much growth factor, too much mitosis promoting factor. Maybe the receptors are always on, even, the, even in the absence of the, of the growth factor. So the gas is always on. This doesn't give you cancer. Because believe it or not, even though your cells are receiving, receiving the signal to divide all the time, you still have good breaks. So the second thing that has to happen is you got you have to remove the brakes. Now you get cancer. If your gas is always on and your brakes are always off, you get cancer. But both of these have to occur. Just one of them occurring doesn't give you cancer. But here's the deal. You can be predisposed to cancer. You could be born with your gas always being on. Or maybe your gas is normal and you could be born with your brakes always being off. So you could, could be predisposed to cancer, whereas a normal person needs two mutations in their DNA, a mutation that turns the gas on all the time or, and a mutation that turns the brakes off. A person born with one of them already having already occurred is predisposed to cancer because they're only waiting around for one more mutation to occur. Here are some of the uh, molecules that are the gas. That means they say divide. Go ahead and divide, they say. So you can see that it's uh, mitosis promoting factor. Some hormones like growth hormone, other hormones like pro prolactin. Growth factor, growth factor, growth factor. You can see that there's a whole bunch of signals to divide. But we have some signals that we say that turn on the brakes. And one example is the shalones. These inhibit cell division. So these are examples of the brakes. Another one is a tumor suppressor protein. And probably the most famous tumor suppressor protein is P53. 
the lesion of p53 a mutation of p53 is known to cause several different types of cancers so tumor suppressor protein does what it sounds like it suppresses growth p53 is one of the famous breaks of cell division and when that's lesioned or mutated you have no breaks any longer now these signals that say divide or even some of the signals that say don't divide the signal is transduced into the cell through what we call a G protein. This is a this is the G protein. Whoops, sorry. You can see the G protein right here. And it's called the G protein because it binds GTP and GDP. And this is involved in transducing the signal. The membrane bound receptor has a receptor site for a small molecule called a ligand exposed on the outside of the cell. The portion of the receptor on the inside of the cell can bind to the G protein, which has a guanosine diphosphate attached to its alpha subunit. When the ligand binds to the receptor site on the outside of the cell membrane, the G protein changes conformation and guanosine triphosphate replaces the guanosine diphosphate on the alpha subunit of the G protein. The activated alpha subunit then separates from the beta and gamma subunits. This step can be repeated as long as the ligand remains bound to the receptor. When the ligand separates from the receptor site, additional G proteins are no longer activated. Inactivation of the alpha subunit occurs when its own phosphorylase activity removes a phosphate from the guanosine triphosphate leaving guanosine diphosphate bound to the subunit. The G protein subunits then recombine and attach to the receptor in the cell membrane. Okay, so why do I show you that? It seems kind of random almost, like it's out there separate from everything we've been learning. Well, it's not, because the G protein mechanism is going to be repeated over and over and over again now i'm talking about this g protein signal transduction and i'm talking about this ligand being a growth factor or a growth hormone but in fact the g protein mechanism that you just saw where alpha gtp turns on things inside the cell it's a recurring mechanism so i wanted to show it to you in chapter three because you're going to see it again and again and again so the G protein is involved in signal transduction. You're going to see a lot of it. All right, so cancer. So first of all, cancer develops in steps. First of all, you have an abnormal cell. All right, and now this abnormal cell has no breaks, and it has no, and it has a lot of gas activity. So what happens is you get your primary tumor. Now primary tumors could be self-contained, and that means they could be encapsulated or they they may not be able to have the blood flow in them to maintain growth because they don't have the nutrients and oxygen and if this is the case these primary tumors could stay benign now look at they're contained quite often they're encapsulated quite often the cells don't become very primitive they stay they stay somewhat differentiated and this benign tumor is simply a growth that may or may not be harmful to us. It depends how large it is. You know, if it's large and it starts pushing other things out of the way, you might have to have it removed. But it's not malignant in the fact that it's not going to spread. All right. Well, what if the primary tumor metastasizes? And, the, and the, what that means is spreads. Well, what that means is this is a malignant tumor. The definition of malignant tumor is it invades secondary tissues and sets up secondary tumors in the new tissues. So the definition of malignant tumor is it has the ability to metastasize. Benign tumors don't have the ability to metastasize and they're self-contained. So that's how cancer develops and it all has to do with, with mutations in the genes for cell division, the growth factors, and the tumor suppressor proteins. This is showing you a picture of an abnormal cell. Right here is an abnormal cell. Here's the primary tumor. Now, if this primary tumor can metastasize, which I can see it is, then it's malignant. If this primary tumor can't metastasize and it's encapsulated and it doesn't have great blood flow, then it's benign. But this one's malignant because it's metastasizing. 
And then this cell over here goes and sets up a secondary tumor. And now the secondary tumor can metastasize and set up another tumor. And this is how cancer spreads throughout a person's body. Now, differentiation, I just use that word. The malignant tumors quite often, like this malignant tumor, they're primitive. The cells de-differentiate. That means if it's a muscle cell, it becomes primitive and it doesn't look like a muscle cell anymore. It de-differentiates or becomes primitive. These are the dangerous types of malignant tumor. Because if a tumor stays, stays semi-differentiated, then it usually stays benign if it stays semi-differentiated. So what is differentiation? Differentiation is when a cell takes on uh, a particular job. Like liver cells are liver cells. They're not eyeball cells and they're not heart cells. They're liver cells. They're differentiated into a liver cell, an eyeball cell is an eyeball cell. But they all have the same DNA. They all have the same genes. So why is a liver a liver and an eyeball an eyeball? Because Hepatocytes, that's liver cells, hepatocytes turn on liver genes and uh, lens cells in your eye turn on crystalline genes. That's the name of the protein in your lens of your eye. So the liver doesn't make crystalline and the lens doesn't make albumin. But the liver makes albumin and the lens makes crystalline. So this is, this is turning on the appropriate genes at the appropriate time. That's what differentiation is, appropriate gene activation. And this is how your spleen is your spleen and your heart is your heart and your liver is your liver, appropriate gene activation, because they all have the same DNA. All right, just a couple things I want to quiz you on. What is this molecule from this table salt, sodium chloride? Well, it happens to be sodium. How do I know? Because this is water, H2O, and the oxygen of water is partially negative. And of course, the negatives will orient towards the sodium. The negatives will orient towards the positive. So this is sodium. Well, what's this one? Well, it's chloride. How do I know? Because this is H2O, and the hydrogens are partially positive, and they're going to orient towards the negatively charged chloride. That's how I figure that out. What is this? Well, this is, say, five bags, and the bags are semi-permeable immersed in a 0.9% sodium chloride solution beaker. So five bags immersed in 0.9% sodium chloride. Here's one bag. Here's another bag, et cetera, et cetera, five bags. And we're looking at how their mass changes over time. Well, bag A and bag B gained weight. Their mass went up. Bag C didn't gain any weight. Bag D and bag E lost weight. What do we know? Well, we know bag A and bag B gained weight. Now, sodium chloride can't cross the bag. Sodium chloride cannot cross this membrane. I should have said that. So if sodium chloride can't cross this membrane, why did bag A and bag B gain weight? Because water went in. Why did water go in? Because bag A and bag B were hypertonic. And water always travels from a hypotonic environment into a hypertonic environment. So bag A and bag B were hyper. Bag C was iso. Didn't gain any weight. Bag D and bag E lost weight because they lost water. Because the bag was hypotonic to the beaker. So bag D is hypotonic. Bag E is hypotonic. Okay. That's how you figure these things out when I ask you questions on a graph. You just work your way through it. Cell division cycle. This is talking about the amount of DNA in the nucleus. So what's going on at number two? The DNA is increasing. 
this must be the S phase of interface. That's what it must be. All right. Well, what's number three? Well, G2 and M. What's number four? Cytokinesis. How do I know? The DNA is getting cut in half, or decreasing anyway. I can't tell it's half, but it's decreasing. When does the DNA per nucleus decrease? During cytokinesis. Well, what, hap what comes before S phase? And the answer is G1. Well, what comes after cytokinesis? G1. So what do you think this is? S, G2, M, cyto. And this is a, a complete cell division cycle. You see first cycle, second cycle. All right, that's it, folks. Chapter 3 is done. I'll see you in Chapter 4.